Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back to the next lecture. This is the continuation of uh, approximation of space derivative. So in our previous lecture, so I have presented the approximation of space derivative of first order in the, uh, the DC square method or in the mesh free method. So this is the approximation of second order or approximation of first and second order derivatives in this space. So remember that we had so we have uh, f is a function from from interval to is a real valued function in C1. So we have discrete grids xi in a v so i run from 1 to n with average e space delta x where delta x was v minus a by n so our discrete function value f of x i so f i f of i is equal to f of x i i is equal to 1 to n and now so we want to approximate fx and fxx it and arbitrary grid i from it arbitrary grid x of i from its neighbors x i of j where j is equal to 1 2 where j is equal to 1 2 m so m is the number of neighbors of i so this is the same as before what we had in first order approximation. Now you remember that remember that when we approximated in finite difference the fxx. So what we had so f we had taken that f of x i plus delta x was we have taken the Taylor expansion f of x i plus delta x f x 
plus half delta x square f x x and then we have taken f of x i minus delta x is f of x i minus delta x f x plus half delta x square f x x yeah then we have subtracted these two so once we subtract this from here if we add just adding these two or if we subtract from this part to this part what do we so when we add this one on both uh, these two equation then this cancel out then we got f x x is f of x i plus delta x minus f x i minus delta x divided by 2 delta x yeah so we have got this one and now what we have so f of x sorry so when we we subtract from these two so when we subtract from here this this then it is plus this here and when we add so why do we add f of x x is equal to f x i so f of i plus 1 minus 2 f i plus f i minus 1 by delta x square so this was the final difference formula so now again in mesh free we use again Taylor's expansion so we use Taylor expansion of f of x i j around f of x i so here what we have taken the Taylor expansion of x i plus delta x i minus delta x around f of x i first order second order now we have since we have the discrete point our points are not regular so so this is uh, a to b we have function here and our points grid points are arbitrary so if in a finite difference we had leave equal distance so in the distance of delta x everywhere therefore we had this here delta x but here we have the distance between these two points are not delta x therefore f of x i j is equal to f of x i plus x i j minus x i f x plus so half is exactly the same but a little bit difference x i j minus x i square f x x plus error function e j where j is, is equal to 1 to m now we put this this part this one so what we get that so it is exactly the same not not much difference here and here but what we had we had a delta x there but here we have x i j minus x i and here half delta x square half of this distance between this one so if I restrict my neighbor if I have the grid point which is on the left and on the right yeah and I restrict only in the size of delta x the neighbor my h if I just take delta x plus 0 0.1 time delta x very small so if I restrict my so this is x i suppose I have regular grid here x i plus 1 x i minus 1 so this is delta x here if I choose my h is a little bit larger up to here so what I get that exactly I get three points x i minus 1 x i and x i plus 1 and then I have in the final difference scheme but now my grid points are very irregular they are not in the discrete uh, they are not in the same distance 
So I cannot have that exactly same final difference formula. Therefore, I am having m equation and two unknown which is fx and fxx. And now again, so this equation I write as a 19.1. So from equation 19.1, since this value is known and this value is known, so we can write f of xij minus f of xi is equal to xij minus xi fxx plus half xij minus xi square fxx plus ej. So this is our from here and we use the same notation like before. So then here I write this left hand side is equal to bj and xij minus xi is equal to I denote it as xj times so it is fx f of x plus half dxj square fxx plus ej so j runs from 1 to m so as before I can write in the matrix form b1 up to bm here dx1 up to dxm half dx1 is square up to half dxm is square times my unknown r fx fxx plus the vector error vector e1 up to em so this implies my b is ma plus e where my m is the matrix dx1 up to dxm of dx1 square up to half dxm square. So a vector is fx xx. Yeah. So again, minimization. of f of a is m a minus b transpose w m a minus b gives explicitly a is equal to m a minus b transpose times m transpose w b. So I denote this as equation 19.2. So now we know the matrix m. We know the right hand side vector b which is the difference between bj difference between f of xij minus f of xi. And this W is the diagonal matrix, so M by M diagonal matrix. Now we can get explicitly that matrix on the in the equation number two, uh, nineteen point two. So let us write explicitly. Now you see the difference between this and that. So here we which we have we have with the equidistance only three neighbors, yeah, left and right. So and center itself, but here we have the center itself and something more on the left, something more on the right. So it is a little bit different, but here we have the number of equations is equal to number of unknown. And here we have number of unknown is two, but number of equations is more than two. Therefore, we have to use the least square minimization process. So here it is exactly. So two equations, two unknown, fx and fxx. But here, m equations and 
two unknown. Therefore, we had to do the minimization. So now, so it is our M transpose W of M. So our M transpose, our M is we know already. So M transpose, the transpose of that is dx1 up to dxm half dx1 square up to half dxm square diagonal matrix w1 up to wm so now the part 0 and m matrix itself so dx1 up to dxm half dx1 square half dxm square. So, this we can write explicitly the, the comp this row times this column, this gives you dxj square and then wait w of j, j runs from 1 to m and this times this is half summation so dx square times dx1 is a dx of j cube wj so j runs from 1 to m similarly this is symmetric matrix so again this times this is half summation of wj dxj cube and then this times this is 1 by 4 summation of wj dxj to the power 4. So, this is our m transpose w m matrix and now our m transpose w of b is again m transpose we know it dx1 up to dxm half dx1 square up to half dxm square w1 up to wm 0 0 the right hand side vector is b1 up to bm so here we can write again so this is equal to this row times this column and the w is the diagonal so sum of dxj bj it comes wj here j is equal to 1 to m and the second one is half summation of wj dxj square times bj j runs from 1 to m so we get this vector and now if we take this inverse of this matrix and multiply by this vector what we get explicitly the a a is nothing else this is fx and fxx so this is again we call as i mentioned in first order derivative that this is the generalized finite difference method or finite difference method in irregular grid but irregular means that somehow we cannot take exactly like this formula so we have to take more points so more points means more equation than unknown and then we have to minimize this part now you remember your first order derivative yeah the first order derivative was so our first order So we can look at itself. So if I have only Taylor expansion up to order up to the first order here, yeah. So what I'll get? So I get only f of x times this one. So I get m is just m by one matrix, and then which is means that I get only this part, yeah. So my m transpose. Wm is just 
summation of wj is equal to 1 to m wj dxj times dxj square and my m transpose w of b is equal to i will have again my matrix m transpose is just like uh, is uh, the first row here dx1 up to dxm times this one and this so it is just so first one row by one column it is just one by one matrix so we get dx1 times summation of wj dxj times bj yeah so this was our first order approximation which we can directly see from the second order deriv uh, derivation and now one more thing is that once if you remember that uh, the interpolation the first order with uh, Lisi square So what we had that f of x o is equal to f of x min minus x of i j minus x nu of of x min minus so times f of x. For example, just consider the first order. Second order will be equal to minus this part is square times f x x yeah now there what we had taken that the derivative was i have directly considered the f of x min so there we made a little bit error in that case but now once we compute the derivative at every point first of all we compute the derivative and then after we store it and after computing the derivative we just plug this one we compute the derivative from this method first order as well as this first order as well as second order and once then we store for all point i once we store that then find the nearest point so f of x o so x o means this is our yeah it is uh, so it is so it is x o s yeah so it is our x new i so f of new of i so then we know it f of at x min the so minimum value and then we can also find the difference between the the neighbor and its a mini uh, the nearest point then the, once we have already stored the derivative we just plug the derivative of nearest grid nearest grid then we get our interpolation that we will see in the in the next uh, next uh, computational session now one more thing is that we may have some sort of we may need to if there is a flow is somehow in finite difference what we have seen that we have used upwinding so upwinding means so either i minus 1 i or i plus 1 or i i plus 1 so either the left or the right so what we can do we can do the same so once we do the neighbor if we saw, sort out the neighbor it is i so if it is positive is going here i take the point i and its left neighbor if it is a negative then i take the neighbor as the point i and its neighbor yeah so if i want to do therefore why i have chosen that the h is something like 3.1 times delta x larger than 3 because if i am sitting i am having only the, the the velocity coming from the left and i sit here so i may have only one two and then very two only two neighbor that may not be sometimes sufficient because 
if my grids are a little bit far. So if my neighbor are here and here, so then my edge 2.1 may not be enough. So I have to therefore I have to take my edge a little bit large so that I will have at least a minimum of three neighbor, yeah, or minimum of two neighbor. So otherwise my uh, my derivative what we will have here or the inverse of this matrix are uh, here. So I have written exactly the same. So A should be M transpose W M inverse M transpose W of V. So I was it was I was writing the same here. So it is the inverse here, not the, this one. So if I have less number of neighbor, then my matrix, our matrix M transfer WM will be singular. So if we have the singularity, then we cannot do any more inverse. Yeah. So that is uh, the thing which we have to point out. Or if I am on the boundary, so in the boundary point, I do not have any neighbor on the right. So I have only the neighbor on the on the left. So in that case also I need at least 3.1 times delta t x for the sake of simplicity, for the sake for the security. Therefore, we have to choose h large enough because this doesn't matter. We can choose even more than this. We can take even 4.5 or 5.1 delta x or whole neighbor side delta x because we are using the weight yeah so we have the the weight function which is the function of distance so in principle you can take all points as a neighbor and due to this weight the anyway the far point has almost no value therefore we have just cut off inside the edge so that we will have to do the less the summation here the summation everywhere is some um, 1 to m 1 to m so now i implement this with the regular as well as irregular grid in the matlab code then you will see how accurate we can approximate the derivative using the mesh free or meshless method with the help of minimization of lc square so i think uh, now I stop uh, so all the computation now. So we have already made the foundation. So we have now we know how to do the interpolation from the irregular point at any arbitrary point, how to reconstruct the value. That will be very important. When we simulate the PDE, time dependent PDE. Then second, we know how to compute the derivative. So once we know this two, then we can simulate our partial differential equation or evolution equation or conservation equation accurately. So let us wait to the next, next lectures, all the implementation of derivatives because I have already shown implementation of uh, the interpolation. And now I see in the, I saw some numerical example, some code, how to approximate derivative. And then we'll continue to partial differential equation or evolution equation. So thank you. See you in the next lecture.